I want to preview the quarterfinal matchups of the Europa League specifically because we've got some fun teams playing against each other. Okay. And first, we have Juventus set to face off against Sporting CP. Juventus is here in the quarterfinals <laughs> They're here. following a 3-0 victory over German side Freiburg. And on the other side, we have Portuguese side Sporting CP who accomplished one of the greatest results they've seen in their history, defeating Premier League soon-to-be champion Arsenal, if things, if things continue going the way they're going, after having defeated Tottenham in the Champions League itself. So two really big results against yeah. Premier League sides. They end up in the Europa League because they didn't make top two in their group, but they continue to have success here. And they defeat Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium after a 3-3 overall tie, going to penalties, and just getting a fucking result. Their coach, Pedro Amorim, is having an insane season for Sporting CP in European competitions right now. And the way that they perform in a hostile environment against one of Europe's best teams was truly remarkable. Pedro Gonçalves having one of the most insane European goals I've ever seen. Catching Ramsdale off of his line, 46 yards out to be specific, to tie the match, push it to overtime, and win it in goddamn penalties. What a result for Sporting CP. They are in a historic run right now. And low-key, it sucks that they got paired up against a strong Italian side in Juventus in the quarterfinals, man. They've been facing hard opponents this entire time. Yeah. You'd think they'd get some sort of lucky draw, but they have to once again earn it against an Italian side in Juventus. Uh, yeah, the sporting season has been so interesting because once I saw that they were getting good results on the Champions League group stage, I then translated that to watch start to starting to watch their games in Portugal in the Portuguese league. But it was different. It was very, very different. It wasn't as dominating and it also wasn't as energetic, almost as if they kind of were just living for those European moments. And they, they knew the Portuguese league was just going to be out of their sides because Benfica is having such a good season. And maybe... Maybe that actually helps them because they can just focus yeah. on these European yeah. games, which is why I think they'll have a decent chance to beat Juventus. Yeah. I really do think so. If they can, if they can beat Arsenal, bro, in a two-legged affair yeah, at this like point, anyone, they can, I, I think they can beat anybody. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think I, I want to see Sporting CP, but I'm actually afraid that Juventus just kind of figures it out. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of afraid of that. Yeah. So much so that I think I'm going to say Juventus wins this tie. Yeah, I think it's fair. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Juventus. Solid, yeah. You mind going Sporting CP? <laughs> so, yeah. oh, I just, so there's, there's no one has them in their bracket. Yeah, yeah bro. I just, I, on this podcast, I don't want it to make it look like we both go Juve. I want one of us to get Sporting. Or if you got Juve, then I'll go Sporting, brother. <laughs> I, actually, I think I would actually, if I had to bet money on it, like, oh, like I'm forced to bet $100, I'd probably bet Juve. So I can't say Sporting. Shit. <laughs> Shit. I can't. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared, man, because it takes a lot to be able to beat a big, a big squad like Arsenal and to continue that. Even though if you have momentum, I've seen it so many times. Just teams kind of fall short despite getting a historic victory in the following round. They just lose it. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's really it's tough. A, it's magic. You need magic. And, I, and every round, that's tough to conjure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go Juve. Yeah, me too. Damn, yeah, man. Yeah. Damn. I know, I know. My sentiments to Sporting CP fans, truly. My sentiment, <laughs> yeah. man. On the other side, we have Manchester United set to face off against Sevilla. This is a Man U squad that just defeated a La Liga side, Real Betis, 5-1. Yeah. to one. Any comment on that? You don't even have to watch it, but just a comment on the Premier League side demolishing a La Liga side. I just... <laughs> 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 at this point anytime i see a la liga side in a bracket i just white out their name <laughs> and i move on the, the their opponent to the next round this is done there is absolutely no way sevilla get a result over two legs there's just no way yeah i uh bet these completely did not show up bet in that these, matchup man, against Bayern united man. Man. five to come one, on brother. five to one and sevilla defeating fenerbahce another turkish side well. falling short in the European competition. Very short, bro. Uh, I have Manchester United winning this game as well. I think the form they're in is still really, really good. Even though they slowed down a little bit, Man U is still Man U. Uh, and I think this is a really big tournament that they're ultimately vying for more than any other tournament that they're in right now. Yeah. Um, with them still being in contention of the FA Cup uh, and having won the Carabao Cup, they had a good shot here to get a Europa League title. Damn. And I see them just kind of putting all their chips in one pot and going for it full throttle. And if Sevilla is a team that's going to try to be in their way of getting that trophy, 
I think Man United will be just fine. Yeah. So I'm going Man United with this one, and you're going Man United as well. Please. Perfect. And on the other side of the bracket, we have Netherlands side, Dutch side, Feyenoord, Santi Jimenez's side, facing off against Italian squad, Roma. Roma oh, against Feyenoord, man. Wow. That's fun. Oh, that's a good That's matchup. really fun. Roma defeating another La Liga side, Real Sociedad, 2 0 overall reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, easy. Yeah. Again, once again, not surprised. Maybe. Let me repeat Real Sociedad got zero goals, right. fourth place in La Liga against zero goals. Roma. Over 180 minutes plus, yeah. technically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, really bad. But once again, I'm not surprised because my biggest heart on La Liga teams is toothless offense. And I think that just exemplifies yeah. that, yeah. bro. Yeah, Feyenoord defeating Shakhtar Donetsk 8-2. to two. God damn. 8-2, to two, brother. I mean, I really only focus on the Mexican aspect when it comes to this team. Santi Jimenez is having an incredible season in Europe specifically. Even though he doesn't start a lot, he bags these goals, man. And yeah. It seems like uh, they really like him over there, man. They, I saw an interview the other day where he's... He's learning a little bit of Dutch. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's getting acclimated, nice. bro. I like seeing it. And I think he's in great form as well as this Feyenoord squad offensively, bro, because eight goals, bro. Yeah, and and they're they're in first place right now in the Eredivisie the Vizi over Ajax. True, true. And they just beat Ajax this weekend. Jimenez bagging himself one goal. Yes, sir. Yeah. So so did Edson. Edson yeah, how about his Mexicans score too? got involved, yeah. man. Damn. <laughs> Mexicans got boom, involved, boom. right? <laughs> really nice to see. Really nice yeah. to see. So Feyenoord and Roma, who are you going with between these two squads? This is really tough. Very similar to the idea of like an Alkmaar Fiorentina final because you have a really yeah. good high flying Dutch side against a, in an Italian perspective, an upper mid Italian side, right? Yeah. Jose Mourinho won right. the conference league just last year, now has a chance at the Europa League. I think just based off of momentum, based off of offensive talents. It's got, I'm going Feyenoord. Damn. Yeah, I'm going Feyenoord. Okay, bro. nice. Yeah. Fuck, man. I really hate a green. I really do. No offense, brother. <laughs> but damn, mm -hmm. I, I kind of want to go Feyenoord. I think first place in Netherlands means a lot more to me right. than what Roma's going through right now. That's They're, what I'm they've been a little inconsistent in their league. Yeah. Feyenoord deserves that respect, is what I'm saying. Fuck and so man. I think I'm going to go Feyenoord as well. Mm -hmm. But between this one and like the Man United Sevilla matchup, for example, I could see this one going the other way. I could see Roma, Jose Mourinho, and European competitions just finding a way to guide and lead his team to another chance at silverware. I could very easily see that. Yeah. But I, I value momentum a lot. Mm -hmm. I value scoring eight fucking goals in the last round and just having oh, the yeah. ability to pounce on an opponent. They just beat the second best team in their own respective league. I think they're feeling as good as ever, yeah. and I see them winning this matchup. So I have Feyenoord winning this. And lastly, the last matchup is we got Bayer Leverkusen. Facing off against Union St. Gilwa. Bayer Leverkusen having defeated Fading <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> These teams are hard, bro. Fading Varos. Fading Varos. Bayer Leverkusen having defeated Fading Varos. 4 0 in the round of 16. And St. Gilwa defeating Union Berlin, bro. Yeah. In the round of 16. Before I get into this, tell me what. what What's what? Why would you, how would Union Berlin lose this game, bro? You've watched it more than I have. I think Bayern humiliated them in the league, and from that point on, they realized they're like, oh, we shouldn't be up here. You know, we we don't belong here. And I don't mean that from like a disrespectful point of view. Yes, obviously, I'm you know having a little <laughs> fun here, but what I specifically mean by that is that Berlin's talent ceiling, I think, has already reached its max, and to go. Well, the season's 10 months long. To go 10 straight months of nonstop high-flying football is really tough to do. When you look at what Berlin have done so far in the Bundesliga and, and in Europe as well, it's, uh, it's a fucking miracle. It really is. And congratulations to them to be able to be as competitive as they have been with the squad that they have. Because when you realistically look at what they have, they don't have much, man. But what they've been able to obtain with that little amount of what they have has been literally a miracle, as I said. And I think finally, in the league, as well as in Europe, it's just caught up to them. 
I really do think so. And it's not anything to be ashamed of because, my God, like, if this team has that spirit to do what they've done over, like, let's say six to seven months, imagine if they had just a little bit of money yeah. or just a little bit... Uh, maybe, e- East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe just a little bit more magic or just a little bit more squad depth, right? If they could add all of that to the spirit that they already have then Berlin, I think, would be very competitive over the course of an entire season. But right now, I do just think the magic is, it, it's over, unfortunately. Yeah. But again, nothing to be ashamed of because what they have accomplished has been, has, has been incredible. But it's, it's done, it's done. Yeah, no, uh, St. Galois destroyed them 3-0 in the battle of teams named Union. Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. 3-0, yeah. bro? Yeah. 3-0, well, considering... It's just crazy to me. It baffled me. I completely get what you're saying because the mental toll it takes to lose to yeah. a team like Bayern in the way that you did when they were like in second place or third at the time, it's killer, bro. I mean, even in my it's rec killer. league, when we play against the best team and we get demolished 6-1, it makes that victory I got 1-0 the past week feel like fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> it's a reminder of where you stand, man. Yeah. It, it hurts. It really does. And so I get that mental aspect, but I haven't seen Union St. Gil wise, so I have no idea what's going on for them, but... Props to them for the ability to beat one of Germany's best teams and go into the fucking quarterfinals set to face off against another German side. Curious to know how St. Gilois are doing in their league because they play in the Belgian league and I wonder if they're like top two because if they are, then that's dope. And that, that means they're like backing it up in Europe. So we're talking about Ghent in the, uh, in the conference. conference league. They're in fourth place. Okay. Union is in second. Perfect. Okay, second so place. Really good year. And only three points away from first. Nice. Which is uh, Genk. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're good. They're good. They're good this season, man. They're in the running for Europa <laughs> League title right now. That's actually crazy. They're having yeah. an insane season. We yeah, might need to look into them a little bit more, man. I'd be that's down an incredible to. story. Yeah, that is pretty dope. On the other side, we have Bayer Leverkusen, who themselves have been a very, very attractive team for me so far. Honestly, most of this season, man, mm-hmm. I remember what really made me uh, gain respect for them was the way that they played against Monaco. Such a fun round of 32 matchup in the Europa League that saw Bayer Leverkusen ultimately come out on top in what was like a 5-4 aggregate. It was so high scoring. It was crazy. <laughs> but with Xabi Alonso, the midfield legend uh, at the helm, Bayer Leverkusen is playing some incredibly pacey, incredibly dynamic fun football and what i love about them tactically is that they're not scared to readjust themselves they'll start off games super offensive super on the attack almost like how a liverpool would uh, in the first 20 minutes during their height they would just go all out but when they need to sit back and go back to a more regular formation more defensive formation they're not afraid to do that and the thing is they have the tools to be able to do that very well so i see them as a very versatile team ultimately their defense isn't up to par with what their offense is when you have names like Florian Wirtz, one of the most prolific teenagers in world football right now. Uh, a guy like uh, Frimpong, who's on the wings at times, can be so electric. Uh, Musa Diaby is incredible yeah. as well when he's yeah, making good. the right decisions. They have these really good options up front that just bags them goals time and time again. And Xabi Alonso knows that, man. So he does his best to put them in positions to succeed. And we've seen that success pay out, man, with, with another victory in the round of 16, now setting themselves up for a quarterfinal matchup against Union St. Gilwai. I'm excited for this one, man. I'm excited for this one, and I'm excited for this Bayer Leverkusen team because for me, the ultimate test was this past weekend when they were set to face off against Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich needing the points as badly as they have in the past 10 years. Dortmund is on their fucking ass. They're on them. Here comes Bayer Leverkusen hosting Bayern Munich at home but having so much momentum behind them. And I remember, and I'll show the screenshot if I need to, I texted you before the game started. I texted you and I said, brother, Bayern Leverkusen is defeating Bayern Munich. How'd that game go? I just want the viewers to know at home, Reynoso has been nonstop texting me about Bayern fucking Leverkusen. (laughs) Catch their games, you know. They're onto something. Pissing me off. So what did I do this weekend? I saw that they're playing Bayern Munich, and I said, okay, let me see what this team's all about in the biggest game in the Bundesliga this weekend. And I'll say this. I think the one word that I could describe Leverkusen after this performance is relentless. They literally for 90 minutes, nonstop. 
and whatever category you want to put them in, whether it's just on the defensive end, nonstop. Yeah, they never let the Bayern Munich players have any sort of breath. If they were even close to their to their own defensive third, there was two to three Leverkusen players just ready to hound that Bayern Munich player and get the ball back. And then from that point on, it didn't matter if it worked or not. Once they get the ball, boom, off to the races, whether it's with Adley, Frimpong, Verts. It's, it's ridiculous. Demerbai. Like, yeah. they, have so many, they have so many tools to utilize on the offensive end, and a lot of them is, like, pace-oriented. Like, they truly are a transitionary team, so much so that I looked after. They have the most in-transition goals in the Bundesliga. Wow, I didn't know that. So, like, they're just... That's, it's their bread and butter, bro. Yeah. It is truly their bread and butter. And they went off in that game just from that sort of relentless physical point of view because my god dude the game was incredibly physical every time there was a chance to put a body on a munich player they took that opportunity and honestly Bayern munich kind of got bullied in that aspect so much so that like, they did not get the result because of that because at the end of the day even though Kimmich got Bayern munich the lead yeah. one nil to start the game it didn't really matter to Leverkusen because they have one mantra, and it's just be relentless. Yep. It, it actually is pretty crazy, and I was very impressed by that. Now, I will say this. I feel like Bayern Munich lost the game more so than Leverkusen won. I'm going I'm to go take that route here because at the end of the day, Leverkusen did get two penalties. Yep. I'm not going to say they were cheap, but I'm also I'm not going to say they were like, oh, that was like a nice at penalty. The end of the day, it's two penalties, you know? Like, yeah, yeah like you don't want that's not the ideal way to win. Right, 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 right. right you want to be able to shape up goals and finish. Yeah. Which they, they did shape up a lot, but they had to rely on those penalty calls. And if VAR didn't exist, they would have lost that game. So that, like, that's, that's so also yeah, what I, crazy, I agree with that. bro. That, 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 that is what crazy. I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, like, um, so overall, I feel like Bayern Munich actually showed more to me than like Leverkusen showed to me in that sense because I was like, wow, this is probably the laziest, the weakest, and less motivated Bayern Munich team I think I've ever seen. Because that game was pathetic, man. Like, and the thing is, they've had good moments this season. They've had really good moments. I think it's specifically in the Champions League. But in the Bundesliga, we see games like this against Bayern Leverkusen mm -hmm. where they're just like, ah, we're not up for it today, boys. And yeah. then they get beat, bro. Yeah. They get soundly beat. And that, that's one thing I want to make sure. Uh, I want to make this cl very clear. Leverkusen deserved the win. I'm not going to say they didn't deserve it. I just think Bayern Munich really let themselves go in this game. Because at the very least, they should have competed physically. And Leverkusen won that matchup. And it led to two penalties because they were just always on the forefront. And just lazy defending. Upa Makano doing some weird shit. Oh, yeah, it was weird. Weird shit, bro. And just, just doing some rash challenges. And it leads to two penalties. You just got to be sharper. Munich were, at the end of the day, Leverkusen were sharper than Bayern Munich. And it got them the dub. But... The two penalties, did you see how they happened, man? Yes. Two simulated yellow <laughs> cards that were non-penalties <laughs> go to VAR, and he's like, ah, shit, my bad. My, my fault. <laughs> my fault. My fault, brother. But twice. Resends them. What's crazy? With the same player, yeah. Adley. <laughs> Nuts. Like, the, the statistical anomaly of that is actually pretty crazy. And then who puts both of them away? Ezequiel Palacios. And at this Palacios. point... If there's an Argentine player on the pitch and there's a penalty, he's my first choice as far as taking it. Oh, bro, I have a whole take on Argentine players right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> players right now that are Argentine have this insane juju going on for them. Yeah. It's insane. It's like that World Cup just infiltrated the DNA of every Argentine that plays professional football. And now all of a sudden, you got Tiago Almada scoring oh, yeah. bangers. Yeah. <laughs> scoring bangers <laughs> in the MLS. Yeah. You got Palacio scaring, carrying Bayer Leverkusen and penalty goal scoring. Yeah. You have so many Argentine players just playing at incredible mm -hmm. rates and levels of quality right now. And I truly think it's just an after effect of them winning the World Cup. I think so, There's too. this insane confidence they have right now, man. Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful thing to see. It really Loki is a beautiful thing to see. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an Argentine vibration just yes, going bro. throughout the planet. You're on a crazy wave. You can only right now. pick it up if you're Argentine. Crazy, That's actually crazy. Bro. Crazy. The thing is, and my response to that is that I, I actually agree. I agree. Bayer, Bayern Munich lost it more than Bayer Leverkusen won it in a way. But yeah. the reason I still value it incredibly high is because Bayern Munich's a potential Champions League title winning squad. Yeah. And they don't need to be compared to that. Bayer Leverkusen, if they would have gone on a tie, I still would have been happy because Bayer Leverkusen is in the Europa League. In order to win the Europa League, you're not going to face a team as tough as Bayern Munich. So for me, the, so the fact that they won that match says to me, 
they have the capabilities to win a European League now. Yeah. They have the, the ability to beat a Man United, to Ooh, beat a Juventus, okay, to beat a Roma, okay. whoever it might be. That's all I had. That's the that's all I need an answer to was that. And I got my answer, brother. Yeah. So for me, I'm not going to nitpick it, although I do get why you are doing that. Is Bayer Leverkusen an actual Europa League title contender? For me, they are. And that's why I have Bayer Leverkusen winning this matchup, and I have them going to the final, no matter who they face off in that semifinal. So what's the bracket looking like now? All right, so we start with Juventus Sporting CP. We both win Juventus, right? right yeah. So Juventus faces off against Man United. Oh, okay. Yeah. Big matchup. Oh, man. Big That's going to be a fun one. Big matchup. I'm just I'm going to go Man U. Just right now, Man U. I'm going that, I'm going that route. I wish Augustine was here, man. I would love to ask him what he thinks about Juve. Yeah, man. I would love to know. Uh, I'm going to go Man U. I'm going to go Man U. Um, ultimately, Juventus has been just crazy. Crazy this season. Crazy this season. Yeah. Wildly inconsistent. Has had some high moments. Some really low lows. And Man United, on the other hand, I I just I really do think they're very determined to get to the final of this tournament. So I have Man United going to the final as well. And on the other side, we both went with Feyenoord defeating Roma. Feyenoord against Bayer Leverkusen is how I have it. But do you have Bayer defeating Union singular wise? My only thing is I have not seen Jawa play. So it's really hard for me to gauge here. But as you said, Leverkusen's ability to beat a possible, you know, Champions League winner in Bayern Munich, that doesn't mean a lot. You're right. That's actually an incredible take. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Leverkusen. Okay. I'm going Leverkusen. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Leverkusen against uh, Feyenoord. And that that's going to be crazy. Hell of a match. Because that's, you know, possible title winners in the Netherlands right now in Feyenoord against a high-flying, in-form, Bayern Munich beating Bayer Leverkusen. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be an incredible Europa League match. Yes, incredible. Yes. Europa League at its finest. Oh God, I I don't know. What what, what would you say? I'm going Bayer. I yeah, you're, I got you're going to the, the final. final. I'm going to the final. I got Man United Bayer in the final. That'd be a banger final. Fuck, that'd be dope. But I the thing is, if Feyenoord get there, they obviously they deserve it. Yeah, and they'd be good enough to get to that yep, final. They are. They're going through a similar trajectory as well. Like, right. They got the same vibrations right now. Yeah, because they're they're scoring like crazy consistently too. <sighs> yeah, let's go Leverkusen, Man United in the final. Shit. Okay. Yeah, let's, go, okay. let's do that. But for me, the Leverkusen dream ends. I have Man okay. United lifting the trophy. Fuck, man. I think I probably do too, but nah. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. I'm going by or Leverkusen. <laughs> Football is funner when you have agendas. And I'm going Bayer Leverkusen, brother. Bayer Leverkusen is winning this goddamn shit. Okay, okay. And I'm going to be the one to say, I said it now, man. I said it now. When they're in the fucking quarterfinals, they're winning the Europa League 2023. You have Man United getting another trophy this season, their second one, yeah. by winning it against Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, that'll be a banger of a final. If Xabi Alonso does win it, it'll be his first year. Oh, fuck, like right? and he yeah. came like somewhat mid-season, yeah. you know, like maybe twenty-five percent of the season. That'd be truly fuck, impressive, yeah. right? It really would be. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 that's a whole little coaching arc in, in and of itself too. So that's really cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah.